Welcome to our boat shop, everyone. My name is Joe Buskins. I'm a second generation professional boat builder, full-time fishing guide. And today we are in our boat shop where we build and repair boats on a daily basis. And I wanted to give you guys an overview of some of the fabrics that you're gonna most likely encounter when you're working with a fiberglass repair job. Now, when you say fiberglass, it's kind of one of those things that you could, it's almost like saying lumber or plywood. Um, most people kind of know what you're talking about, but there's some variations. There would be like marine grade plywood and there'd be furniture grade plywood, for example. And there are materials you're gonna work with commonly and some that are kind of on the exotic end of the spectrum. And that's the same way like with the materials we work with. We don't work with a whole lot of like Kevlar and carbon fiber and some of the crazy high-end exotics. Um, most boats you guys are gonna be dealing with and working with are probably gonna be made out of your standard four or five different what we would call weaves or combinations of your basic glass fibers. One of the very most common is what we just refer to as mat in, the, in, in our shop or CSM, which would be chop strand mat. And it's basically random fibers. And I'm sure you guys have seen us working with this before. Um, what's really, really good about mat is it's readily available. It's really good at bonding to a lot of different surfaces. Um, one thing you're gonna wanna remember though is it's not compatible with epoxy resins. So a lot of what we do is gonna be with your polyester resins or vinyl esters. So you do not wanna use CSM or matte if you're working with epoxy. Now, what usually works in conjunction with matte is gonna be your woven roving. Um, this is woven at a 90 degree, if you look, it's gonna be straight up and down and straight across. And it is comprised of long filaments or fibers that it's very interesting. These are, they're quite strong. I'm giving that about, <laughs> I don't wanna punch myself in the face, but what's crazy is when you abrade them, if you rub them on a surface, that's just plywood. And you can see how quickly it will, it will cut that but very, very strong um, as you're loading it and this spreads load out. Typically, most of the older boats you guys may be working with are gonna be a combination of mat and woven roven. Now, as you move into the more modern fabrics, you're gonna be dealing mostly with the biaxials. So what we've got here is some 1708, which is in a 45 degree pattern and then we've got some 1808, which is in a 90 degree. If you look, the fibers and filaments. Now, what's interesting about the 1708 and 1808, if you've never worked with any glass at all, is when I was growing up and we built boats in this shop, we would use a combination of mat, roven, mat, roven. When you're working with 1708, it actually has the CSM or a layer of mat that is sewn into and with your 45 degree fabrics. Now this is very, very popular and it's actually what we use to laminate our big 29 foot hybrid bay over there. When we were doing the hull, we did a combination of 1708 and 1808. And these are essentially the same materials. They're just, one is, is woven in a 90 degree angle. One is woven in a 17 degree angle. Personally, if I were only gonna have one in the shop, it would be the 1708. Now what's cool about these is even though it's got the CSM or the mat in the back, it is not held together with what are called binders. If you're just using straight mat, it does not work with epoxy resins. If you're gonna use 17 or 1808, it works perfectly fine with epoxy resin. So it's kind of a best of both worlds deal. Now, one of the other materials that we work with on occasion is what we call a finishing cloth. And basically, if you look at this really, really close, it looks like a very fine version of the, the woven roven, which is basically what it is. Now, we don't use a lot of this because for one, it's very expensive. Um, two, when you put a layer on, on, it's very minimal build. So you don't get much thickness. It takes a lot of layers to get any volume of buildup. But this does work really good. Like say for in the past, we built some little epoxy, some stitching glue epoxy skiffs. And this works quite well with epoxy. It does not have any binders in it. You can also use it with polyester resins, but typically when we're using finishing cloth, 
basically all we're trying to do is seal the surface of like a marine plywood in like a stitch and glue application matter of fact i've got a little sample piece we did in one of our previous videos where we showed fiberglassing over plywood and i hope you can see that um you can see we've got resin coated plywood and then and then the finishing cloth and it builds on a very it's it's very very fine but it does a really good job of sealing the plywood up so in the world we operate in those are going to be your your most common fabrics you're going to encounter and there's a real good chance that if you got a boat that was built probably in the 80s or prior it was more than likely going to be a combination of woven roving and and chop strand mat if you got one of the more current boats there's a high likelihood it's a combination of the 1708 and the 1808 and very unlikely that anything other than like your little rowing shells or very very lightweight kayaks and canoes that are built with marine plywood and a stitching glue application are probably going to have the finishing cloth or the six ounce now what i want to show you guys are the most common tools we're going to be working with and again i'll start with the most common to the least common and in our shop we work with just a good old pair of serrated scissors these have a very fine serration on the edge i bought these at lowe's or home depot these are fiskar brand i believe and they actually do a really really nice job of um cutting the woven roving it's it's kind of a no must no fuss not a big deal this works really really good if you want to shape you can cut curves in this stuff if you are cutting around pieces of pipe Sometimes when we're trying to lay the roving, we may cut little pleats in it that allow it to work around a radii. Now, there's also power tools that are made. Believe it or not, when we're building a boat and you're cutting a lot of glass, sometimes we cut so many pieces of glass that your hands actually get fatigued from working that scissor. And um, that is a Romec brand now there are other electric scissors some of them are cordless this is corded because we're working in shop and when we're building a boat we may be using a lot of glass and it's got a little rotating wheel there and i'm going to kind of demonstrate for you guys it's got a little foot Ah, oh, there you go. Gotta have a long reach for that. Um, you can see how easily it cut that woven roving. It does a really, really nice job. But don't feel like you gotta go out and buy one of those. We, we built boats for years just using quality scissors. Now, if you wanna work with mat, it's the same deal. You can use scissors to cut mat. Um, it, does a, it does a beautiful job. Not a problem. You can cut little bitty pieces. You can cut big pieces. Just be careful you don't want to cut your fingers. Same deal though. You can use the corded fiberglass cutting wheel. And it'll cut curves and complex. You can cut crazy oddball shapes with that. But believe it or not, one of my favorite ways to work with Matt is going to be with a straight edge and all we're doing is tearing it off the roll now it may seem odd you may be like well man i don't know why would you tear it off the roll but a lot of times when we're fiberglassing we like these feathered edges on the mat a lot of times we'll use that to finish out an edge and you get this really nice easy smooth transition rather than a hard stop and all we would do is a lot of times we would just take a tape measure for example and if we're cutting strips we measure out the width we might want and then i would just start and we're holding down the straight edge and we're just tearing that mat right across the table just like so now a lot of times yeah and a lot of times we'll have a partner on the other side and they'll finish out because it can be tricky to reach across the table now if i really lean across there I can grab this other corner, hold down on your straight edge, and pull up just like that. And we've got a finished piece of mat. 
Now I've had a lot of practice at this, guys. I literally grew up in a boat shop and we've probably torn thousands and thousands of pieces of glass. But um, the scissors are a good way to do it. Now biaxial, again, same deal. You can use the little electric tool. Scissors are gonna work very well also. I think you guys kind of get the idea. Now, as we move forward, there is one other option that you can use, and you're gonna be using your straight edge, and you're gonna be coming over here to say, for example, this finishing cloth. This stuff is very lightweight and very delicate, and it tends to kind of torque around and twist you can use scissors, you can use a cutting tool, but I found it a very effective way. Say for example, if you're trying to just get strips in a certain width, say you're doing a stitching glue type skiff and you just wanna come over a fillet in the corners, you can use a razor knife, just your standard off the shelf razor knife. You've got a good straight edge here and you're gonna press down firmly on the straight edge And it's just a really nice, steady cut all the way across the table. Now, y'all will notice I'm holding the straight edge kind of at the same place as the razor knife. Now, I have found that normally two cuts are gonna be the way to go. What's interesting is you can cut glass, both the 1708, 1808, and the mat with a razor blade as well but i find the other the other ways are more effective and you can see right there you can see that line is cut you can pick this piece of material up but you have to handle this very delicately or else it will kind of torque out of place so again remember y'all multiple tools that you can use i would probably recommend if you've got a pretty good size fiberglass project going on Source these from Lowe's, just your standard scissors, although some of your bigger supply warehouses make heavy duty shears specific for cutting fiberglass. Um, a good razor knife, a little marky, uh, sharp, <laughs> marky, a marker, also known as a Sharpie brand. A lot of times these are really, really good for marking out where we're wanting to cut from. So if we're wanting to cut strips, we'll use that to cut across. And then if you got a little more money in your budget, you can get a corded fiberglass cutting tool, but they make some very nice little small, lightweight cordless ones that do a beautiful job. So that's kind of an overview. Obviously we're not getting into, again, the carbon fibers and the Kevlars and the crazy exotic stuff. 99% chance this is what you're gonna be working with on a day-to-day -day basis on your average restoration project or build. So you guys, hopefully that was helpful. If it was, and you wanna see me continue to make more videos on YouTube, produce more content, the more of y'all that subscribe to the channel, give me the thumbs up, the likes, the shares. If you got a friend that's into this kind of stuff, we wanna do more of it, but we can't do it without y'all's help. We genuinely appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. It's Captain Joe here with Island Marine Charters and Fishbump TV on YouTube. And as always, we will catch you guys next time out.